So now we start and with Amelie Wangskart from Linköping now, but, but actually you're from Denmark. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Um, pretty good. We got three points yesterday, so that was nice. <laughs> it must have been an exciting game. Just a couple of minutes and then Witcher was leading one goal to nil, but then you turned it around somehow. Yeah, I think it's always a hard opponent to play against Vichy, and especially at their home field. Yeah, They're pretty strong. It's it's a very small village in, in southern Sweden. For those who don't know, Vichy, you were you were born and raised in in a place called Pandorp, I think. Yeah, <laughs> and that looks also kind of small on the map. Uh, tell us a little about uh, your first years small. there. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like just a small village in. Denmark close to Blokhus, like where especially German people go on vacation and just live there with my mom and dad and older brother and my grandparents close by. So in a safe community, you could say. <laughs> a lot of nature probably around you. Uh, not that much in Pendle, but like in uh, like 10 minutes drive, you're in the woods in Blokhus and but, but by then... the sea too. Okay, but then you started playing football very early. I mean, four years, I read, that's very early. And, and your brother was one of the reasons why you started, wasn't it? Yeah, he's uh, from 95 and I'm from 96. And then he started like going to that children football playing around. And then I just wanted to join. Oh, I guess my parents brought me because he was going there. So it was like a small start of football. And then it just continued. That happens very often when I when I talk to players that that they have like older brothers. Two weeks ago, I had uh, the opportunity to speak with Lena Oberdorf from Germany, and she also had this older brother who took her with him to the to the field. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. But then you started doing it for real, and, and some they realized that you have a talent that is maybe a little bit more than uh, average. When was that? Yeah. When when did it turn for you to the more? elite mm. kind of thing I think my parents and people around always saw that I was maybe some steps in front of my own age in from the town I was in uh, and then about I was I think I was 12 or 13 then my parents like asked if I wanted to move club to Fortuna Young uh, and take a try out there and then I did that and then it just kind of went from there with the elite football did, did you travel all the time? I saw it's about one hour per bus to, to Yaring from Pandrup. Yeah. And did you travel all the time by bus or did, did your parents drive you all the way? Uh, my parents was driving me <laughs> back and forth, but we were like uh, three players living kind of close by each other. So our parents was like taking turns and driving us okay. every, every time. So a whole bunch of girls going to Yaring. Then. Yeah. All the time. And and then you played from 11 to 17 years of age. And uh, everything really started. And you also played for the national team when you were 16 already. Uh, I was going to all the, you have all the, where you get like collect all the girls. And I was a part of it from, yeah, almost like the first ones they made. And then I got some knee problems just before Nordic Cup with the U16. So I was injured for a year, actually. So then I missed out on the U16 and U17 national team. And then I came back for the U19. But it was not ACL. But you had, um... No, I had, uh, I don't know how to explain <laughs> it. It's a bit weird. I had, I hit a piece of my bone, my uh, okay. thigh bone down in my knee. Oh my God. I had to get back. <laughs> On my mm. knee. <laughs> that sounds sounds horrible. <laughs> but then, then I, I read twice on, on two interviews that you've given that then somehow you stopped playing football. I don't see that on Wikipedia because Wikipedia, if you look at Wikipedia, you, you go just like from 2008 in Yaring to 2022. And, and you went yeah. to Bellerup Skovlunde Football in Copenhagen. Uh, that's also kind of a funny story. I wouldn't count it in. Okay. Uh, because they were, they needed players, and I didn't want to play football. So I said, like, I can come for the games, and then, but I'm not going to train football. So it okay. was more like 
playing games. <laughs> so that wasn't that phase of your life when, when there was really the danger or the risk that you would stop forever. Uh, yeah. I think at that point I was still like thinking I would never get back to football. <laughs> and how, how old were you then? I must have been, oh, I don't know, maybe. I think I stopped when I was 19, 18, 19, 20, something. <laughs> but that all those to... years is kind of blurred, if it makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> but that happens to quite a lot of girls in football. I mean, there are so many talents like you. If, if we would have lost you like in, in, in the sports, it would have been a great pity uh, seeing what you, what you are capable of doing. But we lose so many other talents, don't we, in, in that age span? Yeah. Girls yeah, who don't think... come back. Yeah, I think so. And I think looking back in my, in my youth in Fortuna Young, where we had a lot of good players, I think we were like about 90 when we were the most players. And I don't think that many plays now. So uh -huh. we lose a lot of players going from maybe youth football to the senior football. Yeah. And, and why, did you, why, why did you lose the, the fire? Was that because you did too much, like from the age of four, you did more or less <laughs> nothing else than playing football? Yeah, maybe. And then I think maybe also being injured can be hard mentally and then maybe having a bad, or not a bad, but a hard time coming back uh, mentally. Uh, and then I think just a step from going from youth to senior football is a big step in a club like Fortuna Young, where at that moment I was competing with uh, almost only a national team players and I was like 17 so it was a mm. hard competition uh, so I think the time I spent on the bench didn't like add up for the things I wanted to do outside of football is, is there moment. too much pressure on, on on football players today what do what do you think I mean even now you are in a different situation obviously but but you look around and you see others and is there a lot of pressure now that everybody says that women's football now is rising it's getting stronger it's getting bigger and 40,000 people will see Tottenham against Arsenal I think in two weeks now from now but is the pressure also rising for you guys mm. you girls playing I think actually I would if I was young if I would look Oh, if I was in the same situation now and women's football is where it is now, I would maybe see it as a motivation more than a pressure. Because I think that when I stopped, it wasn't like that big with women's football and you know, kind of the highest you could get was like playing Champions League and then the A national team. Uh, where I think now the opportunities are opening up and I think it makes it easier kind of to get out and try something new than it was those years ago that's, that's true. Um, you can dream bigger yeah and i think that's good to use that as a motivation and but i think definitely there is a pressure on football players in every age so i think it's maybe just about being patient <laughs> sometimes but that's also something i think about uh I, th I thought about it today when I was thinking about questions to ask you that, for example, in your case, you came to Lin Shopping and you, you have said, said yourself, I scored never so many goals in my life before than I do now. 18 goals in 19 games, which is amazing. And you lead the, the uh, scoring sheets in Sweden. Um, so people are always asking, I'm not going to ask that question to you now, <laughs> because, but I think many other journalists were asking you that question, where, what is your next step? Where are you going from here? Instead of maybe saying, just enjoy where you are. Mm. I think I'm focusing most on just being where I am. And then I will, my agent and I have a good communication. And when we feel like it's the right step, of course, I'll look at it. But I'm not, I'm really happy to be in Lynch Shipping. So I'm not going to leave to just leave them. What, what brought you back to football? And then what brought you to Sweden then? Uh, Brian Sansen, who is the coach of Everton, actually, because uh, he was the coach I had in Fortuna when I stopped, and then he was kind of the guy who called me and asked if I wanted to start again. Uh, and I think he knew how to just handle me. Mm -hmm. kind of. <laughs> uh, so it became like the perfect start to get back. But then you were in Copenhagen, in, in uh, New Zealand is also Copenhagen. Yeah. A well, like team. a bit outside, yeah. Mm. And there, there you were living on your own for the first time when, when you went there. 
Yeah, they were qualifying for the women's league. Uh, so I think also that was a good way of having like a motivation of getting the club up in the highest league and then to develop women's football in that because they have a men's team and I think they have like some good values also. And and taking the step to Sweden, what, what happened in a uh, call I from th- Lidköping or did they scout <laughs> you or? No, I think I played two and a half year in North Zealand. And I think at that moment, I was like starting to feel that I wanted to try something new also because I'm not that young. <laughs> it's not like, so if you I wanted young. to get, <laughs> yeah, but like if I wanted to get out and mm. then try more than one thing, I was like, okay, now I have to like make a move kind of. Um, and then we got in contact with Lin Shipping and yeah, it went out well. <laughs> Yeah, I looked at the the uh, former Danish players who have been to Linköping. It's an incredible number. Marian Geihede, Penilla Harder, Maya Kildemus is also somebody who stopped playing football. Then yeah. Janni Arndt, uh, Sophie Bregot, uh, Diane Hashemi, Katrin Paskesurzen, Johanna Rasmussen, the, the assistant coach of the national team, was in Linköping once. So you are in a big tradition there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But but then they I, actually I read that they uh, hired you as a winger, and and then you became the center forward. Yeah. <laughs> was, how, what, what's the, what's the idea behind? Was it Andre Eglitz who had uh, that idea, basically? I think it was actually mostly Brian's idea because okay. I I've always been like an offensive player and mostly attacker actually or a wing. Um, but then I tried the wing back in North Zealand and then I played that for some time and then went to Linshaving as a wing back. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the story about the wing back. <laughs> and then they lost uh, Uchena Kanu from Nigeria. She went to, I think, Mexico. Yes. And they needed somebody else to score goals. Yeah. <laughs> How would you describe yourself? I mean, I, I've seen you now twice on the pitch, both here in Stockholm in, at, against AIK and Roma Poikana, and you are not that tall. I think you're 168 centimeters. But, no, but, no, no, I'm, I'm like, that's wrong. It's that's between, wrong? Yeah. yeah, I'm like 10, me, 10 centimeters taller than Okay, <laughs> I, it is somewhere out there that you are. That, yeah. <laughs> okay, we have to correct that. That's very important because you have that. You have a, you give a very strong physical impression when when you see when I see you on the pitch, for example, when people yeah. see you on the pitch. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess I am tall, but I'm also kind of skinny. I would say, so I think like I'm strong too, but I wouldn't say I'm the strongest player in the league. And I think like now there was like one girl who kicked me down and afterwards yelling at me you're t- you're the tallest girl on the pitch you should lay down <laughs> and i'm like you just removed my legs from like, <laughs> the ground of course i'm falling uh, so i think it is of course a strength to be tall and be strong but i think i have a lot of other qualities too but you are like a classical number nine. Would you agree with that? When you play as a center forward, like not so many other players have that, neither in men's football or in women's football. We have lost that uh, kind of player almost a little bit yeah. in modern football. And you are like that a little bit when you have the order to do so. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and um, how how is that? Describe a little bit how the team worked. I mean, Andre Jäger, he said because last year I think it was Linköping was okay, but but this year you're actually competing about uh, for the championship or at least for a Champions League spot, and something happened with that team. And Jäger said, I think recently in an interview that we needed that first year to sort of develop everything to build something, and now in the second year we can sort of uh, ripe. At, everything is is grown now and we can uh, do a lot better yeah but i think it's i agree with everything like i think something clicked kind of this season uh, i think the tactics and the way we play really clicked and our high pressure is working out well uh, and then we just have a lot of creative players that is good with the combinations and the crosses 
and you have a lot of experience with, with people like Nilla Fischer or Kaiser Andersson, who has won, she won three uh, championships in a row, I think 2016, 17, and 18, two for Lynn yeah. Shopping and, and one for PTO. That's kind <laughs> of remarkable. Yeah. Um, are you a football person through and through, or are you doing other things besides football? I mean, I know these players who watch a lot of uh, football. For example, tonight, seven o'clock, are you going to watch Real Sociedad Bayern München? It's live on YouTube. You can you can watch uh, it if you want. Yeah, maybe I should do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think actually, uh, I do a lot of other things outside of football, or at least I did when I lived in Denmark. Uh, I like to have the focus on football when I was at practice at, at games, and then outside I would like to just hang with my friends and do other stuff. Um, but after moving to Sweden, I'm watching more football. I think I have so much time that it's good to have just running on the television. Yeah, you're a professional for the first time now, really. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what did you do in Denmark besides uh, playing football? Uh, I was a trainee in Novo Nordisk uh, for two years, and then I studied a bit on the side. Uh, so that was also kind of stressful to have a full-time job kind of on the side. Uh, so now I moved here and I would say you have a lot of spare time. So now I started studying again. <laughs> okay. What, what are you doing? Uh, business uh, admin administration and economics. Always, always good to have <laughs> something like that. Yes. yes. <laughs> but, but I saw you on your Instagram. I looked a little bit in your Instagram and I saw you diving. You're diving? Um, at least uh, I, two pictures. I have a dedicate. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I took it when I had my years off. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, I have been diving a couple of places. But uh, you also fell from the sky in one picture where you, where you are skydiving. Yes, skydiving, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was also fun and bungee jumping too. So I think I got like ticked off <laughs> those things in my two years. So you're not or, afraid oh. of anything, sounds like. Uh, not like. Um, I think I am scared of something. I, for example, I'm scared of sharks, but I also went down to a cage with mm, okay. great white sharks swimming in oh front my of it. <laughs> so that was pretty scary. But I think I just want to get the most out of it mm. at the time. Okay. Um, now you have lived for 13 months in Sweden. And um, I mean, there's some people always say that everything is alike in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, doesn't matter where you are. But but I think there, there, there must be some differences. Have you noticed some differences mm -hmm. between Copenhagen and Linköping, for example, apart from the fact that Copenhagen is a lot bigger? Yeah, I was about to say it's a lot bigger. Yeah. Uh... I don't know, actually. I think people are really nice here. And like, so, yeah, I don't know. Besides from the language, the food is a bit expensive, <laughs> actually. Uh, I don't know. I think it's pretty similar mm -hmm. to Denmark. Yeah. And what language are you speaking in the team, on the team? Uh, is this more Swedish or uh, is that English? Because you also have some other foreign players. Yeah, I think it's kind of a mix. I think Andrea tries to speak English most of the time because, of course, the Japanese players doesn't understand Swedish. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I'm talking to Swedish players, they are kind of speaking Swedish and then I'm answering in English. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. What what are you doing when 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 football when there's no football on television and there's no training and no game and you are just at home and and relax? Do you listen to music or do you watch TV shows or read or? Um, I try to study, but it can be hard to focus <laughs> on studying. Okay. Uh, and then my boyfriend is here like half ah. of the time, so I oh. also spend time with him and go out for coffee with some of the girls on the team. Hmm. Uh, but otherwise, I just like relax and watch reality or something. Hmm. Okay, yeah. I think that was almost everything. I'm. Thank you very much. It was a very nice conversation with you, and yeah, you too. and uh, I see you actually on Monday when you come to Hammarby. It's going to be a tough game as well. Yeah. Here in Stockholm. Yeah, but they have uh, also the cup game tomorrow. I think. Yes, exactly. Shipping, yeah. yeah, against yeah. North Shipping. Thank yeah. you very much, and and all the best to you. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.